All right, guys, I think we're going to get started. Um, Westwood Media Center is taping this. So um, if anyone else would like to tape it, is there anyone else I should ask that would like to record it? No? OK. We're calling the meeting to order. Um, so first, we'll start off with the chair's report. I'm going to flip them a little and just start with the membership update. Just quick to let everybody know that Peter Paravalos is actually not going to be on the um, school building committee anymore. He, I think he's traveling a lot, and the commitment was a little bit much for him. So um, sad to see him go, but we wish him well. <laughs> so hence, we have a couple of seats. So moving on to the debrief on the community engagement sessions. Um, I know a lot of you did attend these. There were two of them, October 23rd and November 4th. Um, we were there, the architects were there, the OPMs were there, and I was really happy with them. Um, the first one, we got about 75 people. The second one, we got pretty close to that, maybe a little bit less, which I thought was a great turnout, especially for the first community forums that we've had on this. Um, the presentations, I think, went really well. They were informative. The, the designers gave a brief presentation. Emily gave a very good overview of the MSBA process. I also talked about the need for why we're here, um, particularly more in the second one. And then we did go into the breakout sessions, and I thought those were fantastic. I think the, the um, if, if anyone participated in, and I'd love to hear other people's thoughts, but um, I felt that a lot of issues came out of those breakout sessions that, you know, I didn't think of or I didn't think were on people's radar. Um, and that was really important for us to hear. Um, the, we've, at this point, we have summarized all of the sticky notes that went up on the walls. We just got that final summary yesterday, so we're looking over that. I think the idea is that we are going to create FAQs, which is a point later in our agenda, from all of the concerns, the sticky notes, the and sort of um, present to the community the, the feedback that we got from the community sessions. Um, overall, I thought they were, they were, I was very happy with them, and I was very happy with the level of engagement that the community has with this project, which is exactly what we want. So um, does anyone else have any thoughts about them? Sum that up well then. <laughs> <laughs> so there's just double quick. There is a summary. All those sticky notes have been taken with thinky key themes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Got yeah. It. And that will, is going to go up on our website. I yeah. Believe. So the idea is that we would summarize what we heard and what was on the sticky notes. And I mean, in fact, it's not summarized. It's literally transcribed. So we okay. can. Um, we can push that back out to the community okay. so that people who are at the forum can see. Okay, here's here's what came out of it, and people who didn't have the opportunity to attend and also see what what came out of the discussions. Yep. Any other <coughs> questions? Or? And maybe just give, I don't know if it's the agenda, give the, I know the format hasn't decided, but just a heads up on what's happening in December yep, at a we, high level. We're just, we have that on the okay. agenda to okay, talk about got it. further on. Thank you. Anything else on the forums? No? Yeah, All right. So can you tell us exactly what you're going to do with those thoughts? <laughs> how, how are you going to process them and so forth. Yeah, well, so we're going to post them on the website, and I thought I might also send them out to our listserv, our parent listserv, just to sort of push them back. And then we collected the um, contact information of everybody who was there. So we thought we'd send an email to all of those folks thanking them for attending and saying here was the result of, of the The meetings. other thing, and I don't know if this is worth it, maybe this, but we could think about doing for each of the four questions, maybe mm -hmm. some sort of word cloud. It's done. it's done. Actually, yes, we have that. Wow. We okay. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's something we can also push out so people can see the themes that came out. Well, the, the, the other purpose of that, too, is, and something we'll need to process and think about is the, the, the ones that are particular that seem to have some repetition to them and some emphasis, I think will inform the criteria that you use when you look at the different options to come mm -hmm. to a mm -hmm. decision. So I think that just needs more conversation and yep. how we do that. But. They, so that they do get used. So maybe an action could, whenever the appropriate time, share it with this group. I don't mm -hmm. know if it's on a Google Doc or something. So. Yeah. Yeah. I just got it yesterday. I will. Oh, okay. I yeah. Send whenever. It out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Do 
want to add that you guys did a great job with the PSA advertising for that. <laughs> well, we need to thank Western Media Center for that because well, it, it got a lot of hits, like a lot of people. Yeah, saw yeah. It. Well, it was it was great. I mean, it, it was so easy to do, and they were great to work with. So that's a Western Media Center plug. That was that was a fun experience. <laughs> All right, um, moving on to discussion items. So uh, the last time this group met. We, were, we hadn't yet gone through the designer selection process, and um, I thought it, you know, so we wanted to give an update on that, and I was going to turn that one over to Tim okay. um, to sort of tell us about the process. So um, as I think we went over the process, but essentially uh, the, the designer selection panel makes the decision on the architect and the MSBA program, as to rem remind everybody. And the town has three members, which the three members I thought did a really uh, great job in terms of research and homework and really went over the top in terms of visiting different schools and uh, getting their um, opinions sorted out. And then so they, the, the three members, by the way, were Maya and Superintendent Parks and Nancy Hyde. And they met first to shortlist the, the, with the design and selection panel. So the design and selection panel has, I think, 12 other members. So that's three. But they're very deferential to the town. I thought they were very deferential to the town, um, the district's opinions. And they, they shortlisted um, four firms for interviews. Three, three firms. I get confused with them. Yeah. Three <laughs> firms for interviews, um, which I won't try to remember all the three of them. But um, we end, two weeks later, that same panel meets again, and the interviews are conducted. And the interviews last 45 minutes or so, and they're basically made up of, uh, I think, 30, 20 or 30 minutes of presentation, which are very strictly monitored by the chair, and then um, Q&A. At the conclusion of all that, they deliberate amongst the panel. Again, I think giving the, the town and the district uh, I weight more weight than maybe other members of the panel might get. And then, uh, but the, but it is an equal vote, and they voted. And so, in the conclusion, I think um, it was a pretty clear consensus for uh, many people that Doran Whittier was the the preferred firm to to be ranked number one. And so, Doran Whittier, who you'll hear more from momentarily um, was selected the first so the way that works is you're selected as the the uh, highest ranked it means you can negotiate you negotiate a fee with that highest rank firm which we've done and you'll hear about that later on um, and so then that moves forward into the contract the contract which we'll get into is a you know the MSBA standard contract and we'll talk a little bit about that but um, so the fee is much more around sort of some of the additional services that we want thrown in. So um, that's it. So I think it, um, I mean, I'm, I think everyone's happy that Doran Whitty has joined the team and I don't, I don't, they'll talk, Don Walter for the principal at Doran Whitty will talk more about their experience and, and, um, and um, their thoughts around schools and elementary schools. Yeah, I thought it was a really interesting process because um, <clears throat> We have the discussion, and then immediately everyone says, okay, vote. So there's, there's no time for us to talk. There's no time for anybody else to sort of caucus at all. And you just go right into the vote. And for someone who would like to think a little bit, <laughs> um, it, was, it, was, it was interesting. But um, as Tim said, the result at the end of the day was, was pretty clear. Um, and we're very happy with the result. And they definitely deferred to the district um, or at least certainly listen to what we had to say, which the result shows. <laughs> um, which segues ways very nicely into the designer's presentation. Um, we do have later on in the agenda the approval of their contract, so we haven't approved the contract yet, but um, we did want to get them in here and um, have them present to us. So I'm going to introduce Don Walter, who is the principal in charge. And Mike, I'm forgetting your last name. Carollo. I knew it was a P. <laughs> um, who is the educational programmer? And I think we have a handout that they can. Yes. They have provided. We have a handout that can be used as placemats later for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I, yeah, I know you you guys want to be quick, so we'll, we'll be brief. But first of all, thank you. 
we're, ju we're just thrilled to have been selected uh, to work in Westwood and uh, in particular on, on this project. As you'll see, we go through this quickly. Uh, we really enjoy doing elementary schools. So uh, and the whole idea of doing consolidation perhaps of a couple of schools is exciting too. <coughs> just adds more moving parts uh, to, the, uh, to the process. So I'm Don Walter. I'm a principal with, uh, with Dorn Whittier Architects. And Mike Parolo is here as uh, one of our educational planners uh, who actually is a former teacher. So this is near and dear to his heart also. We're, we're a 60-person firm. And uh, we predominantly do K-12 public education. So, uh, you know, this is right up our alley. The, uh, just to do a quick page turn, one thing that we use as a theme for this particular project, and it's really true of all of them, but uh, we try to bring it forward, is this idea of doing the elementary school project through the eyes of a child. So obviously we deal with adults, we deal with staff, we deal with parents, but this, we're creating space for children. So that's, that's first and foremost in, uh, in our process uh, thinking as we go forward. The next slide uh, picture here, just a quick picture of us, just to let you know that it, we collaborate amongst ourselves, but we also know the value of collaboration with the owner's project manager, with the building committee, school committee, the town, and the parents, the teachers. It's very important. Th this is not about us. This is about Westwood and finding the best solution for you as a community. So that, that's always going to be out in front also. And I just want to point out that the people in this photo are actually on our team, all of them. So. Yes, <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> uh, so in terms of the rest of the team, uh, when you look at the roles, um, uh, obviously I'm up on the top here, but Rob Fitzgerald is our project manager who could not be here this morning. He's, he's kind of our quarterback. He's keeping us all organized and, and leading our team forward. Glenn is a project architect who will be assisting Rob and also be heavily involved with the design and the planning, working <coughs> with Jason uh, Boone and Mike, uh, who will be leading that effort. And I think you saw in the last two community forums, Jason and Mike were really together leading that, uh, the educational planning. And then Giovanna, uh, is a very important person also. She's our interior uh, designer in the office leading that effort. And this isn't picking colors and carpets and materials. That's part of it. It's all about creating uh, the internal space of the building uh, and working hand in hand with the team. So this group is who you'll be seeing primarily throughout the, uh, the entire project. Uh, in addition to Dorn Whittier, we have a team of consultants. I won't go through all this, but uh, we've worked with all of them, almost all of them, extensively. And the numbers that you see are the number of projects we've done with each of those consultants. So, uh, and these are people who are heavily engaged in schools, in public uh, design and construction. And as you can see, we've done a lot of work with them. In terms of our experience, uh, this is our 15th MSBA project since 2009, I think, is when we uh, were first selected. And of those 15 projects, Eight of them are, uh, are elementary schools. And not to, uh, and, and maybe the equally as important is uh, the building energy use, health safety, daylighting. So we highlight that there are 14 lead school projects. And that's just one measure of a, of a healthy, energy efficient building. But that's one of the measures that MSBA uses to uh, help you get more reimbursement points. So that's, that's something that um, uh, we take very seriously. And the eight elementary schools that we've done are on the next page. Uh, we worked uh, a number of years ago now in Dedham at the Avery Elementary School, both the new uh, elementary school behind the high school track. Uh, currently going under, under construction is the Bomber uh, Elementary School in Northbridge, uh, which is a consolidation of two schools, almost 1,100 students there. Mm -hmm. So trying to make a big school small creating smaller communities is, is a big focus on this particular project. The Mulcahy Elementary School is another consolidation of two schools, uh, just over 700 students uh, down in Taunton. Uh, that's under construction right now. That'll open next fall. Uh, West Parish in Gloucester uh, is just under 400 students. The Park Avenue in Webster, about 800. Pine Grove was a straight renovation 
different project with MSBA. That's why that's not a uh, LEED certified project. So that was a straight renovation up in Rowley. East Gloucester is just going to the FAS with MSBA. And we finished with Sunita Williams, which we are just so excited about over in Needham. That just opened. And uh, boy, if you haven't had a chance to go through there, we, we invite you all to because it really is an exciting project. And we're, we're, excuse me? Well, it was designed for 435. And um, the, the community's like, feels a little light. So we were able to craft the space in such a way with lower students per classroom uh, ratios. And they've, they've got about 515 students in there now. And they still fit comfortably. But it's, uh, yeah, it can fit about 535. So there's our elementary schools. And then, you know, about, about this project, we know it, this, this is a Hanlon project, but we're also looking at Deerfield and Sheehan. So this is a, a map depicting where the, uh, the three schools are located. Um, you know, right now we're talking about looking at the Hanlon site and the Sheehan site as potential locations uh, for schools. But, you know, this is an evolving process, so we, we don't really know where this is going to end up. That's, that's why we're all here. Uh, meeting and we'll be talking uh, further and you can see the multiple enrollments that we'll be looking at on the next slide uh, Hanlon alone Hanlon Deerfield or Hanlon Sheehan and then lastly some of the uh, evaluation criteria that's a question we, on the site yes, map. Oh. what's the black line the so if you look at for example at Deerfield you see the little site but then there's a black dotted line around that for example Oh, um, the dash line. Sorry, the dash line. Those are the areas that are most densely populated, where the oh. majority of the students attending okay. those schools. Okay. Yeah, it's not not being recognized as the catchment area. It's just the immediate surrounding area. Oh, okay. And then, lastly, uh, some of the ideas that uh, we've already been thinking about and talking about in terms of educational goals. You know, best location, community use, uh, you know, what is this going to be additional re renovation, is it going to be new, we want to minimize disruption uh, to students and staff during construction, the impact on traffic, um, depending on uh, what the solution is, and then the cost, and you know, what are the value adds to the project. So, it's a quick overview. Does anyone have any questions? Could we maybe, in, instead of doing piecemeal, Maybe pick a time where we could all go over and meet them. Yeah, we're planning. You mean the the whole uh, school building committee, or the yeah. or whoever wants Either. to go? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we've been talking about doing that, um, and I think that you guys are going to coordinate that for us. Me too. Yep. So, um, and and I mean, we should see others. Whoever's interested, yeah. not just Sunita Williams. We should see a few schools, and I think we had a short list of schools we were thinking of seeing. Um, so as soon as we get that up and going, I think it might be tough to do it all together. All together, or I'm trying to think of between now and um, d maybe in December we can do it. The Avery would be another easy one to get to. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, a parent in one of the focus groups that I sat in suggested possibly doing either um, a video tour or some interactive photographs of some of the schools that have been done. That you know. That way, other stakeholders could also Yeah, I mean, if the schools that we visit let us do that, that would be great. You know, and to that, I'm sorry, to that point, um, you know, I don't, I, I don't know that you could have kids in videos, and there's a whole other issue. But some of the concerns that came up, at least in the group that I was in, was um, we're looking at aesthetics, and we're looking at, you know, so when. When we show pictures of an empty classroom, you know, looks beautiful, whatever. But I'm not sure that people understand or can actually visualize the difference in, in teaching and learning mm -hmm. that goes on. I'm not saying those pictures are bad. I think they're great. I don't know if there's something we can do, though, to um, for this particular group of folks who think that, um, you know, we're just looking to get a nice, bright, mm -hmm. shiny, bright new school. Mm -hmm. And it's really not. So really get into the, the need for, for the education piece. Yeah. The yeah. programming. Yeah. 
I don't know if it would be helpful. I actually was at a meeting. It happened to be a meeting with uh, some of the, the staff and the principal from Sunita Williams, completely separate uh, math uh, workshop. And um, just hearing them talk about it was really helpful to me, um, kind of what they like about it, what's functional about it. It might be helpful for people to hear that. Yeah, someone at our table, at our focus, I forget who was at my table with me, um, said the same thing. She she is an educator and she wor works not in, she works in the Needham district, not the Sunita school, but um, said, you know, you should go talk to the teachers and find out what's working and what isn't. I'm sure you guys have gotten feedback as well. But I, I think that, you know, to get out to what Carol said, but I think that, um, you know, showing pictures of the cafeteria and what it could look like, those were great pictures, but I think for people who perhaps don't have kids in the school and or whose kids have already gone through the schools, they're going to look at it and say, you know, we don't want to raise our taxes so that you can have a nicer looking cafeteria. Right. I thought the pictures of the uh, spaces that showed kids um, studying, you know, the workspaces, I thought those were great pictures yep. because it does show how what the educational benefits to doing the school would be. Yeah. No, it's a good point that we should focus on that. One of the issues in the, the small group that I was in, there, there are people here who just don't even know why we're doing this. And there's a certain level of the need to get there. I know the last time we did the engineering type of work, uh, I think something would be very valuable in these conversations with people getting into this issue. Uh, we compare ourselves with other towns, with MCAS and all of this stuff. And the last time we looked at some of this, we realized that our 1940s and 50s schools are so far out of date with the competitive school systems. I mean, one person at the table said, why do teachers want to come here? You know, they're opening the windows to get air conditioning. Uh, and it'd be valuable that somebody could actually look at these competitive towns and when their elementary schools were built. I mean, we're prehistoric. And I think, <laughs> not that that sounds like an important thing, but there's a lot of people who would be won over by being able to show them how backward our system, our, our, our buildings are. We've kept them alive, they're safe. The second thing is, I think, as we go through all the background checks on the buildings, is to begin to make it clear to people that these buildings have to be changed. We can get state money or we do it on our own, but the code violations are so bad, we've kept up with them, but you are going massive, massive money spent with or without state money. Because some people say, why do we need to go through all this stuff with the state and you know, meet all the... But I think it's sometimes valuable just to be able to point out that this a very significant amount of money is going to have to be spent anyway, just to meet codes and all of this, make them safe. We've done a wonderful job doing that over the last 60, 70 years, but I think those two things would be helpful with some people out there who aren't as sophisticated yet to get into this, but why are we even doing this and why the, the town needs to get behind it and support it for, for those reasons. I want to clarify, our building's a state challenge. <laughs> <laughs> We're very safe, but okay, it's, very costly, it's a very costly way to do it and to keep it going to the future. Uh, you know, very significant things can have to be spent. No, it, it, it's a very good point. In fact, part of the process is we'll look at a number of different options for the schools, again, Hanlon being the, the, the baseline school, and one of the options is to determine what it would take just to keep the building functional. That's that talking about code. Capacity. If you look right. at the, the chart, that's the code repair option right. on that, or, ren or it just yeah, says reno, right. but reno. essentially yeah. that, that does what Don's looking at. Just yeah. what do you need to do over the next period? And usually you try to game it out if, you, if it doesn't pass. It's kind of answer to an FAQ, what if this doesn't pass? Right. Well, we have to spend. We will, we will be doing that. Yeah. So that includes the ADA compliance. Absolutely. Right. Mm -hmm. it's, it's comprehensive. In right. fact, uh, our team is going to be in the buildings uh, starting on Monday. Yeah. Uh, so uh, our team of architects and consultants will be going through. <coughs> one, one of the other things that came out of this, one of the sessions that I was sitting at was um, a concern that the appetite for another debt exclusion or override uh, wouldn't be there because we had just done the library and the police station and the fire station. So I don't think people who have only been in the town for you know maybe four or five years realize that the fire station and the police station were done within two and a half and it didn't raise people's taxes. So I think we should be, that should be you know yeah. reiterated. Yeah. So. 
and that the this school is coming off right right yeah just about the same time at about That's the right. same time mm -hmm. yeah and these are all really important points that we're we're definitely going to have to make when we go to to sell to sell this project to the town if I could uh, Carol's comment about the video yeah we actually did a video for our Gates Middle School project in Situate which uh, has been very well received about six minutes long uh, I think so we're going to be doing the same thing for Sunita Williams so and that's something that's coming up now now that there, it's opening function and you'll get some feedback granted it's a video yeah uh, but from teachers from students from the administrators about the school and how it's functioning so that's that, great that and that's help. something we could push out to the community absolutely yeah mm -hmm. that would be great great any other comments all right great thank you you should stay you. there <laughs> okay. We're gonna have more stuff for you. All right. Um, so next, we were gonna review the the project schedule and the two month work plan. I don't know if you guys wanted or Tim, if you were gonna do well, that. Well, I'll 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 start it off, but we're going to it'll be an interactive. Okay. Um, so this this handout just to go over sort of the total schedule. This is I mean the, uh, you know, the this phase of the total schedule. This handout that has the timeline, which is the one that was presented at the community forum. Just to remind people kind of of the big dates that are that are upcoming. Um, and then we're going to do a little more micro look at the next two months, three months. But I, I think, as you remember, there's, there's three major stages in the MSBA program. There's the PDP, the... the um, preliminary design program there's the PSR which is the preferred schematic report um, which is when you actually tell the MSBA what's the concept you're moving forward with and then there's the final um, schematic design which is you know the design carried to about 25 30 percent which is the final sort of deal and that's what gets put in front of the town what we're targeting now as being spring of 2021 so these issues around communication obviously about like what's the debt load and all that is going to become obviously critically important in in you know q1 q uh, q1 2021 which is when we'll know all that more firm those numbers more firmly so um over the next few months we're focusing on the the, the preliminary design <coughs> plan submittal which is in we're scheduled to do that in, in i think february or march but it's around that time frame that has to be submitted to the msba the critical part of that is the educational plan which is going to be discussing more about the educational visioning program that's going to be going on over the next couple of months um, and then the the preferred schematic report we've always targeted the by the end of the school year to have our decision on what is the option we're moving forward in what's the districting implications um, and and so that people head into the summer kind of knowing where we're moving and then that actually would be submitted and that that is the first board vote by the MSBA in the summer of 2020 which I, right now I think is August is that board meeting and you can see it on this is that's the, the final option and then uh, in, se in September and throughout we start the schematic design and that's a much more technical um, meetings with uh, staff to make sure we get the design right per that co concept and then we estimate that and and submit that we're taught looking around February of next year being submitting that and then that then is what the MSBA board votes for the uh, for the uh, project in terms of the scope and this budget and schedule the reimbursement finally um, and then that's also what the town will vote on so that's scheduled right now for the spring of 2021 I think at this point that's probably where we should go in terms of think about ending because some of the other dates although their targets right now it does depend on what option we go with and how that uh, plays out so so that's kind of the broad overlook of where we're going so over the next um, two months we have this there's a couple of plans that uh, Doran Whittier have prepared the existing conditions which you, you have in front of you the existing conditions work plan and the educational programming work plan um, so largely those are the two big focuses for the for the preliminary design plan program and, and I'll let you Don you want to just walk through kind of quickly or Mike or do you want me to it doesn't matter <coughs> 
We can go through it. So, um, looking at the, the site visits, as I said, we're going to we're going to be there on the uh, 11th, and we're also going to be back on the 13th to uh, be out there with our team. We also will be doing uh, traffic analysis, site survey, and geotechnical uh, analysis. And the geotechnical analysis we're going to be doing are going to be borings. No test pitch or anything like that, so we're going to minimize any disruption uh, to the site. And those dates aren't, are not yet set, but they're going to be out there doing some investigative and early planning work over these next couple of days. And um, after that, we'll prepare a preliminary report uh, by the middle of uh, November and then a um, executive summary presentation about the middle of December. So we'll, we'll bat the, that back and forth on the... Uh, the whole uh, existing conditions uh, analysis. And then um, continuing, if we flip it over, we'll, uh, we'll finalize that whole thing by, by January. In addition, because uh, we're going to be going through uh, doing our, our visioning and our educational planning, which Mike will talk about here in a minute, we'll start developing the options by the middle of December. So what we do now is we develop a lot of options. So we, we could see upwards of 10, 15, 20 different options because there could be different uh, uh, potential solutions, whether it's additions or innovations, whether it's new, where it is on the site, you know, what those in, in going through and uh, determine what all those impacts are. And then when we get to the, what is the PDP, um, that's actually going from, from the, the many down to the few. So um, we'll be doing that after, after March. So that will be starting in December. And at the same time, in, in the, uh, January, February, we're going to be doing sustainability charrette. So we know how important that is here in the community. So we'll be thinking about that and talking about it leading up to this. But that, that will be bringing people in and having a larger uh, forum to talk about what some of the goals are uh, for sustainability. And then, uh, you know, the finalization of that PDP submission in February, March, to uh, submit to uh, uh, to MSBA. So, educational so, planning. Um, in parallel with the facilities work plan track, you'll see that the educational programming analysis and information <coughs> gathering happens simultaneously, so that there's always facilities and education running parallel tracks and then coming together, so we can develop these options and make sure that all uh, you know areas are hit um, so an educational questionnaire went out last week to all of the elementary building principals uh, via a Google Doc so I can log in at any time and see they're happening and they're being filled out and they're extremely dense so I appreciate it because um, I know you guys are extremely busy um, and then starting next week as well while the facilities um, assessments are being done the educational planners Jason and I will be going in and working with principals and others invited to the conversation and we'll be doing walkthroughs of the building but through an educational lens so we actually want to see it with the students there how they interact their behaviors you know the environment and how those things come together um, we'll also be doing a specific special education interview and visioning session as well on the 19th um, and then we have several visioning sessions set up um, one is going to be a three-hour PD with teachers um, on December 2nd during the early release day in that one since it's mostly educators we're going to really zone in and focus on who is the elementary child now and in the future what skills do they need and the difference between basic skills academic skills and then these essential life skills that we really need moving forward in the world um, and then what the environment then needs to look like in order for that to happen and be supported. Um, and then there will be other visioning sessions as well. Um, right now we're planning on a community-wide visioning session on December 16th, uh, December 16th, which will be a full day, and that will look at more of a broader scope of really what the vision for education in Westwood. I was going to clarify it. Okay. The, what the thing we talked about last night? Yeah. 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 Okay. Go ahead. Oh. Well. Okay. <laughs> or, or I can do it now. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, please. And then I'll and then I'll We're speak just to. We're concerned about a full day session. For so the, for I think the there's a little confusion. Okay. So we had set aside December 9th and 12th for these evening public forums with mm -hmm. the community. Um, there's also December 16th. So when I had talked to Tim yesterday, 
he had mentioned the the visioning sessions would be four to five hours the December 9th and 12th ones for the community because the December 16th I think is targeted individuals right we those are the ones that we're thinking this this segment this segment this segment sure to make sure all be stakeholders from, are, right it's going to yeah. be all, from all parts of the community but the 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 public ones are the 9th and 12th so the question is what are you envisioning for the evening sessions with the community on the 9th and 12th because the four to five hour one that Tim and I discussed I thought applied to that but I'm thinking because the one on December 16th the, the all day thing we talked about that being maybe 40 to 60 people this is educators parents residents right like trying right. to so get kind of a tables. representative group. Yeah, absolutely and yeah. truly understanding you know what is education what does it look like to, what does learning even mean in the town of Westwood where where are we going with education how will we specifically target these buckets that are in the strategic plan that the district has set out and how does that go you know impact the environment the difference is the nighttime meetings and this we have to iron out a little bit more because we've barely touched on them but to me the the evening ones are more of a not as a deep as a deep dive almost like the information sessions that we just had and received small roundtable community feedback because those conversations are so limited in time that there's such little that we can get deeply from them so that's more of a quick hit so how long how long will they be that's what we were oh for asking. the night time yeah because last night we were under the impression probably mistakenly that it was going to be four to five hours and we thought Oh, we're not going to get a lot of oh. into those. Oh, sessions. yeah, that's I think that's we were past bedtime. We were confusing the events. Yes. <laughs> right. we I mean, I'll be in my pajamas by then. I, say, I was confusing <laughs> the events. So just to be clear, the event, um, the yeah. all-day event, yeah. there are specific folks that are going to be here. Yes. It's not open to no. the public to show up and and. Okay. No, because the, on that day we would be trying to sort okay. of create like a, a group that represents different constituencies Good. and whatnot. And it's not you, it's not something you can drop in and drop out. Good. Whoever okay. goes needs to commit to, to the four to five hour oh, right. window. Right? Mm -hmm. The community forum ones, the the ninth and the twelfth, presumably. And again, this confusion was was my mistake, so I apologize for <laughs> it. Right. Okay. Created a fire last night, <laughs> but. Um, the uh, evening ones, I think, are going to be shorter, mo two hours a max. Right, similar, okay. similar to what we just did. Right, right. yeah, okay. absolutely. Uh, yeah. Okay. And probably more heavily focused on education versus sort of process. And right. Mm -hmm. right. Yes. Okay. 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 But, yeah, I would say those are, the, I don't think we'll ever be in front of the community in those open forums for more than an hour and a half to two hours at right. the most, unless it's a, a major, you know, ex sort of at the end kind right. of meeting. Right, okay. So how will you decide who's going to be at that full day workshop? Yeah. Well, that's what we're working on right now. So um, <laughs> who's working on it? This group or? Well, we just started talking about it at our work meet, working group meeting last week. So I think we need to just understand further exactly who would be helpful to have at the table, and then we can figure it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, probably we'll figure out who the educators, maybe the school committee will figure out right. who, the yep. okay. who the community. Yeah, we just, I mean, 16th is a hard day. I mean, it's during the day, so we just figure that out yeah. sooner rather than later because what giving up a day of work or it's, it's a Monday. not a Monday. It's a Monday. It's not, yeah. and it's, well, yeah, yeah, yeah it's giving a up a day of work. Yeah, it's a work day, so. Work yeah. Day. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe we do a subcommittee. Yeah. A subcommittee of this or of the school committee? Yeah, the school committee. If everybody on the school committee can't do it. Well, that's. I just mean more other community, yeah. parents, anyone else. Right. Right. And so the idea, hopefully, is to, is to get 40 to 50 people who can commit wow. to this. Okay. Got it. So. And, and we appreciate time commitment to this. Mm. And the, the 40 or 50 people, we, we found in other communities that it, it, it does work. Uh, you, you can flush out that many people in a good cross-section to make it work and uh, clearly you want people who are interested mm -hmm. in the project too so uh, we'll help you with that okay great it's not 40 or 50 uh, community members that's right. the whole it's right. the whole right. group yeah, which there's a lot of staff yes. right there's yes so probably what how many typically community members do you get staff aside yeah I mean it, it could it, be 20 or 25, 20 people. 25. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it really ranges as to the, the various groups that you want to make sure are covered like for example in our so recently we did visioning session this time last year in South Burlington Vermont and they had a, a really large community 
outreach and so it ended up being more community members and way less staff mm -hmm. but it's really a matter of what you prefer and what you think you can get the most important thing is that we have a broad brush of all of the important stakeholders that really have a message that needs to be heard so that way we truly get a vision for what this educational experience needs to be I think we also have to consider pulling teachers out of classrooms for a whole day 20 to 25 elementary teachers so that's gonna be I mean yes that would be <laughs> yeah. disruptive I mean I think that it would be classroom teachers but also special educators and then right. specialists and administrators so I it, it won't be like we take 20 I remember it could be it could be seven more. or eight classroom right. teachers I mean that the whole idea is that that three-hour PD day is really dedicated to the teaching staff so their voices will be heard in that conversation so you don't necessarily need as many on that full day but obviously to have ideally if you have let's say six to eight tables set up in the room you'd want a representative almost from each group at each table and that's how I always determine numbers so if you can get six to eight staff six to eight parents it, it kind of works out that way I mean this feels like a critically important activity to have teachers involved in so sure. you know we absolutely prioritize it you guys ask the janitorial staff to join this as well because mm -hmm. no one knows the buildings better than them yeah, so I, yeah. I, I, yeah coaches yeah. secretaries janitorial staff I mean any local businesses that may have partnerships with the school or that may have a, a different perspective about what you know kids need to come out of high school because this isn't just about the Hamlet school this is about education and what Westwood's legacy educationally really will be K to 12 and then beyond for the next you know 50 60 years and then the December 9th and 12th will be open to anyone from the community right just, just like our come up, those just like the other two <laughs> and that will we'll stress in that when we are advertising that is that it's really about the education piece as opposed to the um, construction or the site yes right mm -hmm. okay. and those may be more informational than you know these visioning sessions are more these are not sit and get these are very interactive everyone's working at tables whereas those night meetings may be partially informational like the other ones were where we can debrief <laughs> about what because by then we will have done some tours we will have done some interviews with principals and staff members and things like that that they're going to want to know about for sure yeah and I think in the interest of transparency that would be a absolutely more, a great information to put out in the public mm -hmm. what you what you've done so far okay after one more thing in there yeah I know that we're looking at um, the reasons why we're going to explain to the public why we need to do this uh, one of the other questions that came up at the round table I was at and people subsequently have been thinking about is what's so if we put a major construction use the Sheehan school and do behind the Hamlin what becomes of the Sheehan property does that become more fields is that going to be a COA is it just a if whatever I know you guys are looking at lots of options people want to know they're going to spend their dollar what's it on completely right based upon the feedback that you've heard and, and we've heard also uh, it, it's all going to be part of the study and, okay. and try to try to do, I don't know if we'll have final solutions but we can talk about what the options are and what the community needs might be okay. does the MSBA require <coughs> us to tell them what's going to happen to the like let's say we can talk since holiday at Hanlon and Deerfield on the Hanlon site does the MSBA require us to say what happens to Deerfield um, yesterday I came uh, I read through the enrollment letter that came from MSBA and buried in the uh, third page there's a paragraph that stated that uh, the district if the district selects one of the two consolidation option um, the district would need to um, address the disposition or reuse of the other the building okay. that vac that vacated as a result of the project and also uh, the how the redistricting and the impact to the community and need to demonstrate support from the um, uh, from the uh, school committee of uh, town official and public. So how specific does it have to be? Yeah. Because I think when Tim spoke yeah. about that issue at the meeting, you said it could be as 
you know, nonspecific is giving so it back I, to I, the I'll town. I'll read the, the town well, okay. don't, don't, because yeah. uh, it's more, it's more about the sort of working with them through this, yes. what, what yeah. that okay. means. It's, it's, on another project, it, it meant that the town was going to appoint a committee to look in how to use the building. That's, that's how okay. nonspecific it was. Okay. So it's, they really okay. just want to make sure that um, it's not going to, you know, it's not going to sit there and deteriorate, basically. That there's a plan or a process to get a plan in place for it. So that is, it's sort of, it is the way we answered it at the, right. I didn't realize actually that they were that specific in your enrollment letter because in the previous project it was more, it kind of developed through the project. But um, we, it's by, by the end of the school year, which is when we're submitting the, the preferred solution, that is when we need to have th the answer to that question. So, so I it, think because it came out in so many of the breakout sessions, we need to get that out that we don't have to know specifically what we're going to do with that right. building that we're, we're vacating. It's one of the FAQs we that. that we're going to review quickly and, 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 and um, you know, we're going to work the language about how that gets answered. The, it, it is stated very clearly because that if the district select the Hanlon only, then that question doesn't exist. Right. So right. only, so it's only when you get down to the one option, the, the, when you select one option, and if at that time there is a building that's going to be vacated, then you have to address it. Right. Okay. But there may be some advantage to getting a little bit more specific about what the reuse would be, that there would be some other goal that the town would have accomplished by the reuse of the building. Maybe, I mean, I don't think that's going to get worked out in a great deal of detail, right. but it might be yeah. that there are options that are listed about what it, like the Deerfield School gets right. uh, re re replaced where a Hanlon School op uh, building, that building could be available for other uses within the, the town, town that, that, that would advent, that make the project more advantageous so when would we have to know that at what well we're, 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 we're not even we're not we're not sure when the you know the decision of whether which of the consolidation options isn't going to be finally made until sometime toward the end of the school year right so um would you be able but, to so i think to exactly. to being able to by the time it gets in front of the town which is a year later yeah we should have that answer boiled down but I but but in terms of notifying the MSBA to comply with that no that requirement that Chin just mentioned I, I my suspicion is that we're going to say that there is a, a committee or a plan in place to deal with the vacant now Sheehan or Deerfield school if that that's whatever you know another that's I think the answer for this this year the real work is going to happen once we know which school that is probably in fall of 2020 I, yeah, I think what would happen is um, as we get closer to a decision on what site, what plan, the school committee, school department needs to be thinking along that timeline. Is this a building, if there's a building being vacated, is this a building you want to continue to control or not? Mm -hmm. And then as that decision gets made, then the town side can start looking at if it's turned over to the town, what would we be doing with it and we can I think a committee idea is probably very appropriate, a facilities type committee to look at the town needs and what the town may end up doing with the building if it's turned over to the town. Can yeah. the school no, go ahead. can the school decide to keep the building if we don't have yeah, but we have to pay, pay to operate it, right? You can't yeah. just leave it No. Right. That, 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 that they wouldn't leave like. it to deteriorate. <laughs> and I mean well, if and, we have all of our schools <clears throat> housed, what would we well, we could swing space. I mean, we don't need. Yeah. I don't know if we, need, we might be going too far. Uh, yeah, yeah, I yeah, I think we are. are. Yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. that's the kind of yeah, that's, that's the kind of thinking that you yeah. need yeah. to do. Yeah. Right, and, 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 and I, we will do that. Yeah. Right, hmm. and should it down the line ever come to something where the town doesn't need a property, for instance, if it got turned over, no decisions like that get made without town involvement. And if and if anything, you know, were to be sold can't do that without town meeting approval. So there are a lot of steps. That's why the committee idea yeah. just really resonates. Yeah. <clears throat> Another question that came up in a small group that's related to this somewhat, and that is, uh, at the end of all this process, we're gonna have an awful lot of information about the three schools. You know, 
what we need to do and all of that. And people then came up, well, somebody's going to be left standing at the dance, you know, when, <laughs> who's, what happens to the school that isn't chosen? Right. You know, so we're moving along, we're getting our money from the state and all that. The question came up was, uh, is anybody going to continue planning for the, the school that didn't make it? You know, so, uh, yeah, we got that sentiment loud and clear from the community forums that every, both of them, that everybody was very interested in what happens to the school that isn't part of the MSBA project. I definitely think that's something that we as a committee will have to address and have a plan for um, because I think that in order to, you know, I don't think we can present an option without <laughs> speaking to that as well. I, I think the town really wants to understand what's going to happen. Um, but that that definitely came out. That was one of the major points of both community forums. I'm just going to belabor the previous point, um, which is this. This is what I, I understand what everybody is saying here. But the problem is, is that people, let's take, for example, who live near the Sheehan School. They want to know before, before they're in on a decision to consolidate, they want to know beforehand what's going to ha happen. They don't want to wait. And, and say, okay, you know, we're going to have, there'll be a committee later, so don't worry, we'll decide later. That's the concern, is that, okay, if we give up and say, we're, f there was this fear that this, um, the building's going to turn into something they don't want. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what the point was of these folks bringing it up, not so much, um, it was really the timeline, and I know we can't adjust that to say we know exactly what we're going to do with the building and everything's going to be fine. But I think that's what the concern was of a lot of these folks who were in these groups. I agree. And I think that um, now, the, the t in terms of the timeline, in June, the town isn't voting on anything this right. June. It's just the school building committee voting first in March for the PDP on the to narrow down all of those options that Don mentioned, and then in June to vote for what the final option will be. So at that point, I think it's okay to say, we're gonna form a committee to look at what's, you know, this is our final selection, we're gonna form a committee to see what happens to the, if we're consolidating to the school that's, you know, is gonna close, and also, you know, to look at the other school that's not part of this project. It's the year later when we go to the meeting that I think we have to have these questions. Answered. If not answered, then at least a, a plan. Yeah. Um, because I agree that the, the sentiment coming out was if it reverts <coughs> to the town and the town sells it to a developer, I never would have voted for that project. Right. And, right. I th and that's a f only a few people, you know, that's one opinion, but that is an opinion. Yeah. But by saying we're gonna put this into a committee study, that will satisfy the mandate from the MSBA by the end of it. So but in we'll, June, yes. right. Okay. And then we have about a, a, yeah. a little under a year to kind of right. work through there the, the issues. Yeah. There, are two, there are two, right? There's the but presumably now vacant building. Yes, there's and then, two issues. And then there's two issues. Just, uh, and the vacant building and the building that's not part of the MSBA project. And then I yeah. think, you know, there's, we'll talk about this during the contract discussion, but there's enough money to deal with those issues when we get into that in the fall once yeah. we know those answers okay let's let's keep going because we got I'm conscious of time um, so the next we're looking at an FAQ draft these are questions that I think um, Tim you had put together just based on some mm -hmm. of the feedback um, we also saw some great FAQs from the town of Easton who recently did who actually just had a vote passed two days ago, right, on Tuesday, Yes. Um, for a consolidation of two schools into one. Oh, three schools, you're right, oh. three schools into one um, through the MSBA. So it's their FAQs are, I, are very good, very on point, a lot of them, and they won the vote. So <laughs> we're looking at Easton. Um, but anyway, Tim, I don't know if you want to run through these or if we just well, want to. I, I, my suggestion, so these, are, these were gleaned from comments that were made at the um, forums. There, so there are really two kinds of FAQs. There's, there's ones that are very specific to this project, and then there are ones that every community asks about, which, are, which you'll see represented probably in those Eastern ones as well. Yeah. So I, this is really intended. The big point about FAQs is that we do them early because they're very difficult to catch up to once you're six months into it. So 
I think the idea here was just to kind of get them out. I don't think we need to go through them because really they're a lot more elaborate to try to you know yeah. parcel out than in a big group. <laughs> but I, th I suggest that there there be um, a group that vets. Uh, you know, an answer will come probably most likely from a co collection of us at least initially. But then somebody in Westwood needs to say this is the right answer and this is what we're willing to say is the town. Some some of these answers we won't come up with because they're more they're not their district ones. But a lot of the general ones we would probably come up with and then we just if if, if anything just sort of have a group or or a couple of people or some some collection of people that can say that's we're ready to put the button on that FAQ and put it up on the on the website mm -hmm. that's probably so the, you're saying maybe this group needs a subcommittee yeah I mean I wouldn't get elaborate with it because it's a wordsmith <laughs> I've seen right. those things become a real wordsmithing challenge right. and you never get them put up because nobody likes them <laughs> but I, I would say like a small group that a can filter group. them and be comfortable that what's going to be put up represents you know the mm -hmm. the position of the answer to the to the community I don't think it would be more than two or three people, really. Yeah, I'd be happy to, to work on that. I mean, this feels kind of urgent to me. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, if we could decide exactly who's going to start working on it and get going on it, because... Um, I agree. I think we need now to yeah. decide. Okay. So Tim has put these together. Um, well, Chin did them, but he, no, Chin, he, I reviewed them, so yeah. I'm going to... I mean, I'd be happy to participate. I don't know if anyone else in the school committees. Or okay. I, we don't want too many. Can I just suggest you have somebody that's not too close to it as well because these answers ring too, too insular. Mm -hmm. You've got to think of people that are the outside audience that actually might go to these and say, oh, oh, so there's my question and it's a really comprehensive answer. It might not be long, but for instance, I looked at this and I said, MSBA, what's that? Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to look at it from who, who would this help? So I just, if you get too close, you're not going to have perspective on what the audience needs to hear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think, I think Emily, if you could take the lead on developing the questions. Mm -hmm. Sure. And maybe with John's help. John. <laughs> he doesn't have enough to do. I know, right? He's so he's got a lot of free time. <laughs> yeah. um, so let us do that. We'll get to work on that next week. Yeah, and maybe and get you it. have all of the the summary of the concerns right. from the exit ticket. So you mm -hmm. guys have all the information. And then in terms of who's going to review them, um, Tony, if you want to be on that, that would sure. be great. Um, I saw, did you want to be on yeah. that as well? Yeah. If you need me, I don't, I don't all right. Know. right. Maybe one other person. Right. Um, I'll do it. Can, you want to do it, Michelle? Yeah. Okay. Great. And to Nancy's point, maybe once we think we have a pretty good draft, we can, we can show it to some PTO presidents or right. somebody to say, exactly. what do you think? Yeah, does, yeah. does this answer the question? Right. Yeah. Or yeah. Are you left confused? Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't think they need to necessarily be on the working committee, but maybe yes. reviewing Just it. Fresh eyes, exactly. what do you think? Yeah. Exactly. Right. Okay. Probably what would we, we'll talk more about this at the working group, but is assigning a um, some person initially to write a draft so you have something to look at yeah. and yep, like so I said a lot, of, and John are yeah, do. a lot of them will, and some of them are ones that you probably want us to do just because they're more about process or something you just you just let us know okay great yeah. okay and and also get some up <coughs> and then add to it over time don't have perfection be the enemy that's of, absolutely the case uh -huh. yeah just, get, just, get a core group of yeah. things going and then build uh -huh. on it I think by the next week or two, okay. we can get something. We'll get them. We'll get them the next week. Yeah, they're all over. <laughs> okay, so that's great. Um, upcoming community forums. We we talked about that. I think the concern was the December, the evening ones, but we've mm -hmm. talked about that. We can work those more out. Um, so those are the, just as we mentioned, December 9th and 12th. Um, if every you know, if anyone can attend, that would be great one or both and then we will have more sessions I think probably in February or in January once we we come we have our you know preparation for the short list that we're delivering in March in the PDP I think we'll have some in February with the community again to go through sort of where we are and and, and all these options that we've looked at and how we're narrowing it down um, and then we'll have more community forums. 
before we submit the PSR, which is the final option. So lots of community forums. <laughs> and I thought the format worked. We had a couple questions about can we do these during the day. I think that we're going to stick with the evening ones. Um, we seem to get more people able to attend. and. You know, they are online so people can see them. Um, I know that there's babysitting concerns, but I think that during the evening seem to work well, so I think we'll stick with that format. Maybe we could do one in the morning for mothers, get a different perspective. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have a cup. Huh? <laughs> Nine. Um, Twelve. And then next on the agenda, we had additional meetings. This came up because in order for us to submit the PDP and the PSR, um, it has to include all of the minutes of these meetings and they have to be certified. So we, at this point, we don't think we need, and it, so for example, if we're submitting the PDP in March and we have a meeting in March, we need those minutes to be approved by the board and then um, certified before it gets into the PDP. So we were thinking we would need another meeting after our March meeting just to approve the minutes. I think at this point we think we might be able to do that at the April meeting and the amend our PDP filing to incl we'll s include them draft with the filing and then amend them once we approve them and certify them. Is there any, I mean, John's awesome. By the time we leave, they're already ready to be sent out. Yeah. Is there any way we can end the meeting? or almost at, fin conclude the meeting, everybody gets the uh, minutes from John electronically, we read through it, and then we can vote on the minutes. We can, I don't know, are you that good, John? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you'd have to read It may not be you know, polished, but yeah. all the minutes if will be correct. If we have to submit them as part of the original packet, then we could certainly look at that option instead of calling another meeting. If, we, if the MSBA says, you know what, it's fine, just submit them and draft and then you can amend them once you have them certified, then, then we don't, I don't think we need to go through that. But we'll, we're going to ask that question. It would take longer for people to actually read the minutes than it would for John to send it out. <laughs> right. Sorry about that. Right. No, I think it's a good point. It's a good point. So let's, we're going to take the next couple of weeks to get in touch with the MSBA, see what we need to do. Okay. Um, but that's why that was on there. I saw uh, Jim's memo too. Yep. Your memo's on there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, we're moving on to action items. So the first is to approve the designer's contract. And Tim, if you want to speak to that a sure. little bit. So as I mentioned, the, 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 the DSP basically ranks the first um, firm to negotiate with. And so we entered into those negotiations with Doran Whittier, um, you know, pretty immediately. And we sent them a fee request letter because, as I mentioned, so the MSBA has a, a design, which you, I think you have a copy of, the designer, their standard form contract, which essentially lays, and, it, and it's not really modifiable uh, in the sense of the scope of work. So it lays out basically two things, the basic services and extra services. And the basic services are pretty comprehensive in an MSBA contract, more so than, like, for instance, an, an AIA form of contract. So they're very much uh, so Doran Witty under their basic services have all those consultants that you saw that are listed in their team um, are all all those services that, that they do are all included pretty much under basic services with some exceptions which I'll get into and so that's the that really takes us right through to the town meeting and, and vote that those services take us to that point the extra services are typically things mostly surrounding site investigations um, and existing kind of conditions evaluation that kind of can be unique in, in every project a little bit. So we went through some negotiation back and forth, mostly uh, Don Walter and I, um, about the nature of those. And I think the memorandum, that I, which I won't read through, but I do want to go over this, those um, four extra services that are in addition that we've included into as opposed to writing amendments later on to the contract we've included these currently into the contract so geotechnical report so at this stage the geotechnical really is only done to 
give us some background info because we haven't totally picked, you know, I haven't located the, the building yet on any of these parcels. It would be more around just sort of understanding fundamentally what the geography of those parcels are, you know, particularly see if ledge, if it, it might become an issue on some of them. Um, so we've agreed to limit those to two days of borings at each site. That probably will get us somewhere around six to eight borings, something like that, which would be enough for us to get that feel around the site along with the site walks that we do and understanding. Um, there will be a need to do more in, in this phase. We'll be doing an, uh, later on some amendment once we locate the building to do more extensive around that. Um, yeah. I know we've done studies a long time ago, but I would imagine stuff doesn't change if you're talking about borings. Is there any yeah. way we can use stuff that we... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, you know, it dep I mean, we've used borings that are 20, 30 years. You don't want to rely on them, no. but you certainly can use them to supplement the information. Okay. Yeah. Um, we would want to do some traffic analysis but to, around the um, increased enrollment scenarios because so there's a, a, a discussion around how, how it's not a full-blown traffic report, but some initial um, traffic counts and projections based on those increased enrollments. Um, so that's included. An environmental site assessment, a phase one for both sites. Um, we we're also talking about trying to look at how we can screen some of the samples if, there's, if there appears to be a concern over something more than uh, typical soil that we would expect here in Westwood, which we have not really run into that too badly on the other projects. So I, I, don't, I don't think that's a, going to be a huge issue, but that's something we've included here. Um, and then we've done a survey, again, there'll be need to be do more definitive surveying, but there's a survey enough for us to be able to have information to do some concept design and pricing around those concepts. So those are all included as additional, ex as the extra services in the contract, they're included in this base. So we negotiated a fee of $850,000 for the basic services, which are the, the major obviously the majority of the work and then $100,000 for these additional services for the, as laid out in this memo. And that relates to the budget that had 950 for basic and 200 for extra. So we've been able to um, put away an extra $200,000 essentially in contingency, which I think we're probably going to need given some of these conversations around further study on, on a building that's left out. Um, in general, just you know, looking at the budget, the last paragraph, you know, the million seven fifty budget, if you take our contract commitment and the Doran Whittier contract commitment, um, there is something around four hundred and forty thousand dollars remaining to be committed. Now some of that has been spent on things like Westwood uh, cable and some other smaller expenses. But that's in terms of big picture, that's kind of where we're at. And then when you do the VIP you'll see we kinda keep a running you'll see that carry you know we, we keep that pretty up to date what you have left to spend so with, with that I, we would recommend um, this is consistent with with other projects we're working on of this kind of size and complexity and with other projects in the MSBA system so we would recommend award of this contract to Doran Whittier under those terms so can I get a motion to approve the Doran Whittier contract so moved. second any discussion all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, the next action item is to approve the meeting minutes from October 11, 2019. Can I get a motion to approve those? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. And the last action item is to approve the invoices. Um, you'll see in your packet that there is a memo um, that goes through the invoices. In this case, we are approving six invoices. Um, one is for Compass Project Management for 10000 This is the monthly. Ellis Strategies. Tim, remind me who Ellis is? Or maybe it's our communications consultant, so that okay. had to do with um, publicizing the community forums. Yep. And then Gatehouse Media, Hometown Weekly Newspapers, Norwood Printing, those were all for publicizing the forums. And then Westwood Media Center, um, clearly, for taping. So we have a total amount of $12,316.65. So 
So can I get a motion to approve these six invoices and the amount set forth in this memo for a total of $12,316.65? I'd like to make a motion that we accept with a total of $12,316.65. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carried. Um, all right, we're on to new business. Is there any new business? Maybe, uh, Mayor, if you and Don and Tim could get together on, like, pre-read protocol, it'd just be helpful, especially if we get into options. To on be what protocol? Pre-reads, like, seeing materials ahead of time. Okay. Like, it would just be, especially if you're getting the options, it'd be helpful to see those type of things, obviously, before we show up in the meeting. So, like, John sends out the agenda with links. It would just be helpful to see those in advance. Thank yeah. you. We will, we'll talk more about okay. that, but absolutely. Okay. Anything else? Nope. Our next meeting is Friday, December 13th at 8 a.m. Oh, Nancy. I just want to say this is Mike Gillette's last oh. time being oh, here. That's right. Uh, because <laughs> at our next meeting, we will uh, be bringing Chris Coleman in, our new town administrator. Is Mike coming too? No, that will be after Mike's. <laughs> I have to say, and I've said this wherever I can, Mike has been extremely generous to stay with us through the transition and he and Chris will actually overlap for a few days um, which really helps everybody and uh, so it's it's worked out very well but all good things do come to an end at some point so sadly, yeah. Yeah. sadly for us. thank you Mike thank, thank you, you Mike, Mike. Thank you. You've, you've been instrumental, and I was definitely in denial. <laughs> As I am every day. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion so, to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No opposed. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate the time, as always. <laughs>